Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The harsh conditions in polar environments are ideal for testing the limits of naval technology. That's why, to develop and improve Arctic-specific skills, equipment, and processes, the U.S. Navy created the ice exercises. ISEX consists of a five-week exercise carried out every two years, where the Navy can assess its expertise in the Arctic. Countries like Canada, the United Kingdom, and Norway participate in the exercise, as well as the Arctic Submarine Laboratory. which is in charge of conducting tests and research evaluations. An important component of the exercises is the submarine operations, where these vessels practice maneuvers in tight spaces and surfacing through ice. To handle surfacing during the exercises, the navigation and engineering crew coordinate the process, evaluating factors like ice thickness, weather conditions, and potential threats. For a submarine to surface through ice, it requires various systems and the expertise of the crew. For starters, uh, submarines need to know the thickness of the ice cover for tactical purposes. They also need to know them for safety purposes. A submarine needs to surface um, if it's in trouble, so it needs to know where the thin ice lays. And submarines also play a role in addition to an operational standpoint, they also play a role scientifically. In a process called static loading, compressed air pushes water out of the ballast tanks. This increases the submarine's buoyancy until the upward force cracks the ice. Initially, this method proceeds a few inches per minute but accelerates once the ice has weakened. The ascent is aided using sonar and visual observations to monitor the thickness of the ice. In some cases, when the ice is strong enough, the submarine might use instruments like an ice breaking mast in addition to its conning tower to break through. This capability is carried out by various types of submarines, from attack subs to ballistic missile submarines. The ship's been going through maneuvers here, one of the most arduous environments on the globe, demonstrating global access for our submarine force and the capabilities that we bring to the nation in her defense. Further than just submarines, Arctic missions also rely on vessels such as powerful icebreakers. The U.S. Coast Guard uses their two operational icebreakers, the Polar Star and the Healy, to navigate and break through the icy polar waters. The latter is the only icebreaker dedicated to scientific research in the Arctic. Which has approximately a group of 30 scientists and more than 100 crew members focused on studying the Arctic Ocean dynamics. The 
the icebreakers depend on the design of their hull. So the ice that breaks at the front doesn't accumulate, but is redirected below the vessel. Thanks to this, the icebreaker can navigate safely through the Arctic waters and leave a path for other ships with a higher risk of getting damaged by the ice. During Arctic deployments, dive teams are used to do inspection labor to the hull of the icebreakers. assessing damage or risks in areas that are difficult to reach. These experts must be highly trained due to the conditions that surround them. Extreme cold and poor visibility make challenging the inspections, hull cleaning, or even sample taking for scientific purposes. Developing skills in glacial environments also includes aerial and ground tasks. Because of this, some exercises focus on these areas, such as the Arctic Pegasus. This operation mainly targeted Arctic mobility and survivability in cold and extreme conditions. Arctic Pegasus also served as a rehearsal for U.S. Army Alaska. As part of the exercise, supply drops are coordinated by the Army and Air Force. Effectiveness is what defines the Spartan paratroopers during the Arctic Warrior exercises. These exercises incorporate airborne and situational training operations in the deep Alaskan winter. The paratroopers must show their ability to deploy quickly, operate in harsh conditions, and focus on teamwork. Usually, the troops are dropped from a C-17 and during descent, must consider the scarcity of safe landing zones and quick variations in the climate. Doing this kind of exercise regularly allows for testing and validating protocols regarding winter field training and refining the tactics and techniques that must be implemented in Arctic warfare. Rapid deployments are vital in the Arctic, as the harsh conditions near the pole require every action to be effective and precise. The LC-130 Hercules plays an important role in this kind of mission. This aircraft is equipped with de-icing systems that enable the plane to perform at extremely cold temperatures. For the troops to be able to mobilize quickly in the snow, the plane can also deliver snowmobiles directly to the areas, without the need for landing strips. This expands the reach of operations for the soldiers into remote locations. Delivering snowmobiles into those locations can support and enhance the reconnaissance, search and rescue, resupply, and observation tasks for the troops. The speed of such vehicles allow the soldiers to move across vast distances in a short time.
Medical personnel can deal with injuries concerning paratroopers jumping into Arctic and subarctic conditions much faster and efficiently. During the 1950s, an intercontinental mission called Deep Freeze took place in Antarctica, supporting the National Science Foundation. These continuous operations were located in one of the coldest and most harsh environments on Earth. In the austral winter, the South Pole Station in Antarctica has an average temperature of negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Even in such conditions, this mission has continued to this day since 1955. The United States military has coordinated it to resupply the U.S. Antarctic Program Research Stations in Antarctica. Using airplanes like the Lockheed LC-130 is vital to ensure a successful operation in Antarctica. This aircraft is a specially modified version of the C-130 for extreme cold environments like the South Pole. Its most notable feature is the use of skis instead of wheels for landing and takeoff due to the snow and ice runways. Other important features are ones shared with the original model, consisting of anti-skid systems, reduced engine power, and the capacity to get steep climb angles to clear obstacles. Such modifications allow the plane to carry out its main mission, which is supporting scientific teams by transporting cargo and personnel from the McMurdo Station to field stations and camps. Supporting scientific missions in freezing environments is part of the tasks of the U.S. military. Such is the case with the Air National Guard supporting the National Science Foundation at the North Greenland Emian Ice Drilling Station. Inside those stations, ice cores are drilled either in glaciers or ice sheets. These cores can provide detailed climate records, as they can trap gases or other impurities, which might hint at the events that occurred at that precise moment. Using specialized aircraft like the LC-130, the National Guard can provide the station with the necessary equipment to carry out these scientific procedures. Those tools can include thermal drills, electromechanical drills, or hand doggers. Just as with the Arctic operations, in Antarctica, specialized dive teams from the Coast Guard are deployed to engage in several tasks. Their purpose is usually linked with ship inspections by monitoring the integrity of ship hulls. Scientific research with data collection or emergency search and rescue cases. They are aided by several tools which help them overcome the environmental challenges present in the Antarctic Ocean. Exercises in extremely cold environments refine essential survival skills for the troops. While winter warfare tactics, emergency procedures and medical tasks are developed. Ultimately, 
These exercises contribute to successful missions in these critical regions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.